All right. I don't know if you can hear me now. Can you hear me now? Let me turn that down. That looks great. You can? Okay. So now my audio probably is trash. <laughs> because it's not coming through my microphone. Now I'm getting audio from my webcam, but at least you can hear me. OMG, sorry about that. I'm not sure what's going on with the microphone. I probably need to reset it because it's been like constantly on. I don't turn it off anymore um, because the this particular laptop, I can leave it on. So whatever. I don't care at this point. Hi! I missed you guys last week. How are you? How is everybody? <laughs> How is everyone? Oh my gosh. Lots of things. You had homework. You guys had homework. How did the homework turn out? How did the homework turn out? Uh, let us say hi to everyone that's in here first and foremost. Debbie Kidd and Joni Thurman, thank you. Kizzy, thank you so very much for letting me know that my microphone is acting a fool. And Leah Jones, thank you. And welcome to you all. I appreciate you being here. Carol Coleman, my love, hello. How are you? Ah, Leah Jones, hello, hello. Cheryl Malone, hello, hello. Miss Excite One, hi. Welcome. I appreciate you being here. Joni Thurman, Ronnie's Raps, Dar Smith. Greetings and salutations. I can hear you. I am busy and will be listening. Blessings and, oh Lord, is that French? Rejour? I'm not sure. <laughs> Did I say it right? I need to, I really need to take up another language because, you know, it's trash that I don't have another language under my belt. Maria Coleman. Hi, darling. Sheila Chan. Hello, Sheila Chan. How are you? Terry Romano, your first ever live. Well, welcome. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for joining us. Michelle Soretta. Hi. Hello. I hope I said that right. Coretta. Cor Coretta, maybe. Let me know. Let me know the right way to pronounce it because I want to say it right. Miss Esther, good evening to you. My day was phenomenal. I absolutely love it. And Dar Smith, yes, there was homework. <laughs> Patches, embroidery, and designs. Hello to you. Miss Purple One, hello, my love. Sammy Strunge, Teresa Spencer, hello, hello. Leah Jones, hello. Angela Llewellyn, hi, Angela Llewellyn. How are you? <laughs> Debbie De, De Cristoforo, hello to you as well. And Sheila Cushionberry. Hey, Miss Sheila Cushionberry. <laughs> Fanny Henry. Miss Purple, what you said? You missed me live for the past few weeks. Oh, well, last week I wasn't live. I was out of town actually um, for an important event. And I did miss you guys. But the time before that, look, I can't, why, why is it turned that way? I don't want it turned that way. The time before that, I put out a um, project, so to speak, a little bit of homework. And we'll touch base on that in a moment. Latasha, hello to you. Hello, hello. Um, your pet of oh, patches embroidery design. Okay, cool. That's easy to remember. <laughs> I hope so. Let me, I might mess up and be like, hey, that's a little And don't feel bad because, you know, the old memory is just not what it used to be. So, <laughs> Rajul, good evening. Welcome for your first time as well. We appreciate you being here live with us. Dar Smith says, from 1828, Webster's American Dictionary of the English Language means rejoice. Okay, cool. Well, we're going to rejoice today, definitely, especially for those that did their homework, because we're going to cheer you guys on and make sure that your embroidery is to the level that you want it to be, all right? So we're going to touch base on um, pretty much what you got going on in your studio and what you're trying to accomplish. All right. It's really important. Louise, you said you're new to this. Well, welcome. We appreciate you joining us and being new to the chat. This particular chat, the baby's booty channel tutorials and live questions and answers dealing with embroidery, um, anything for the most part on the subject of embroidery, your embroidery machines, equipment, Things of that magnitude, what we do here is we'll answer your questions as best as we can. I have a whole room full of folk that are embroidery experts. I know um, I don't see her in here yet, but Miss Bickham 
is one as well. She's, you know, we're talking about years, years and years of embroidery experience with a very successful embroidery business. So a lot of knowledge there and quite a few more in here. Um, it's Karen Caldwell. Hi, darling. She does a lot of embroidery. Most of the folks in here, they are in the Google Plus group and we share, uh, you know, the experiences that we have with embroidery. But if I can't answer the question, what I was getting to is if I can't answer it myself, I'll either one, get back to you and let you know the answer because I'm not going to tell you something and, you know, put my foot in my mouth. I try really hard only to make a comment based on my experience and what I have learned from usually experts or someone else in the group can answer the question. All right. So, um, let us see. Oh, I said it right the first time. Sorera. Okay. Soretta. Sorry. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate you doing that. Miss Ethel Smith. Hello. Good evening to you too. Dar Smith. You're welcome. Latrilia. Hi, darling. Hello. Welcome. Latasha, the homework was, and hey, Miss Janie, and hey, Miss Eartha Lewis, the homework was, not last week, but the week before, if you are trying to boost your embroidery business, okay, so what I put out there was a challenge, not the, you know, Kiki challenge, and not the Zoom challenge, none of that other kind of stuff, these challenges were, if you had an embroidery business and you wanted to get to the next level, one of the biggest issues people have with their embroidery business is marketing. You know, they're like, okay, well, how do I get the word out there? How do I let people know what I have? Well, one of the first steps is to utilize what you have available to you that's free of charge, okay? No one knows what you can do if you don't showcase it. All right. So if you were on any form of social media, whether it be Facebook, whether it be um, Snapchat, for instance, whether it's Instagram, uh, whether it's Twitter, it doesn't matter. Your homework was to post something at least one time in the last two weeks that showcased something you did in your embroidery studio so that people can see what you do. OK, so if I'm friends with you on, say, Instagram, and you don't ever put up, hey, this is a kitchen set, oven mitt, oven, you know, pot holder that I embroidered with such and such's name on it. I wouldn't know that you did it, you know. And there could be someone in your friends list that didn't even have a clue that you could do embroidery or that you had something so cool that they could give to someone else, you know. So that was the challenge, all right. I don't know if anybody remembers or not. <laughs> But if you don't remember, it's not that big of a deal, okay? Because it's it's a simple challenge. It's not something that I'm like, oh, my God, y'all didn't do it. But the thing is, because it's not for me, it's your, to your benefit, all right? So if you didn't do it in the last two weeks, okay, we got another week. We got another seven days to give it a shot. Um, so that was the homework. And if you did do the homework, then let me know how it went because that was the thing. I wanted to know what type of response you may have gotten, um, whether it be just some likes or maybe somebody, you know, loved one and said, this is really cute. The point is, whomever is paying attention to what you're paste, posting on social media, they inadvertently are going to talk to somebody else that has no idea who you are. And they'll say, oh man, I need somebody to embroider ABCXYZ, right? And they're like, I know somebody that does embroidery because you're putting it out there. You're putting it out there and it's free. It's free of charge. You don't have to buy the ads on Instagram or on Facebook. You don't have to put the money into it. You just got to take the time. Something that you're already making. I'm not saying go and make a whole bunch of stuff. Make one thing. Post a picture of it and see what response you get. Okay. So if anyone, matter of fact, while we're going through this, I'm going to go back through the list and acknowledge the others that have come in since then. And what I'm going to ask you guys to do is tell me what forms of social media you're on, all right? Because that's why I have the Baby's Booty group on Google+, Plus. because some people despise Facebook. Totally get it. I completely understand, because Facebook can be so full of drama sometimes. But... Facebook is a very good medium for, you know, putting that 
uh, publicity out there for your business. Not saying you have to have a Facebook group, but if you do, let me know. Okay. So if you have Facebook, if you have Instagram or Twitter or Snapchat, let me know and post it in the comment section so we can, you know, let each other know what we got out there. Also, if you are unaware of it, I do have Instagram. I do have Facebook business page. I also have, um, what I say, Instagram, Facebook. I do have Snapchat, but that's a bunch of silliness. I, I'm not a fan of Snapchat. I use it, but I'm not a fan of it. Um, and I have Twitter. Okay. So if you would like to connect with me on any of those platforms, meaning follow me and you want me to follow you back, that's perfectly fine. Just shoot me, you know, whatever they call it, where you ask a friend request that we'll snap back and I'll reciprocate. Okay. So it's the baby's booty on all three of them, all four of them, actually. T H E B A B Y S B O O T Y, the baby's booty on all four of those. All right. So, Miss Janie, hello, my love. Eartha Lewis, again, hello. Dar Smith says we are now caregivers for mom at 98. Nutrition is the most important. If you look well, we always pray for you. Thank you so very much. And nutrition is most important. And I know a lot of times I don't do well with that because of being over here and in the zone. A lot of times I don't eat, <laughs> okay? Which I know you can't tell. I, 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 you can't tell, but I don't eat when I'm over here and I'm in the zone and that's not good, especially because I have diabetes. I need to be eating. So a lot of times, well, what I used to do was keep snacks in here in a Ziploc container so that, you know, rodents or whatever can't get into it if they did. Um, and I hid them so that the kids can't come over here and get some stuff because my daughter drunk up my sodas, but that's okay because I didn't need the sodas. No way. Um, so I keep snacks in my studio, so that's a good practice to keep in mind. And I appreciate the reminder, Dar Smith, because it is important to take care of your health while you're working, especially. And Miss Debbie, you said you just oiled your baby today. That to your so helpful video. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for letting people know, and I appreciate that. And guess what I picked up from Madeira the other day? Here's my oil pen. That's my oil pen, right? So to make it easier to oil all those little nooks and crannies, Madeira sells this. I want to say it's like $4 or something like that. Actually, let me not say that because I can't remember how much it was. I'll have to look at the receipt. But the oil pen is quite helpful. I do have a link to an oil pen or two on my Amazon page. And I want to say the one there is $7. And I know that's a good bit pricier. You don't have to buy that one. You don't have to. But the link is on my Amazon group page um, and it's helpful. It really is that oil pen. So good looking out for your machine, Miss Debbie. We got to take care of our babies. We really do, you guys. That's really important because a lot of times the problems that you're having with your embroidery, a lot of times if you take a minute to clean it out and oil it, it'll solve that problem. You got to think of that. Miss Eunice, hello, my dear. How are you? Shayla McKinnon, hello. Welcome. We appreciate you being here. Um, Karen Martin. Hi, everyone. First timer from Youngstown, Ohio. Well, welcome, Karen Martin. We appreciate you joining us live today. Feel free to ask any questions in the chat. We'll try and get to them um, as soon as possible. Latasha says welcome to you as well. Thank you. I appreciate you doing that. We want to open our arms here in this group. Little Miss Boutique. Hey, darling. Hello, Miss Eve. Nice to see you again and nice to see you too. <laughs> I love seeing the familiar names. That makes me feel great. Miss Debbie says the cat walked across your keyboard. <laughs> Tell the kitty I said go away. We need to uh, have our time. Kitty time is later. <laughs> um, Let's see. Debbie Kid says didn't know what the homework was, but I try to post on <clears throat> Facebook on a regular basis yeah that's a good practice to get into if you're trying to build up your business all right it's an excellent thing to do and it's free it's free of charge it is free i can't emphasize that enough you know there are options where you can sponsor an ad and pay for an ad and it'll get out in front of people who are not on your friends list all right if you're trying to build up you can do that too but i bought into ads not very many responses 
And it could be because my ad wasn't maybe as eye catching or riveting or whatever the case may be, but that's a chance that you take when you put an ad out there, right? So why spend that money for right now when you don't have to, okay? You can do it for free and you can make it public so that other people can share it for you. So if you got friends that are, that's got your back, okay, tell them to share it on their page because they may be friends with somebody you're not friends with and they'll, um, you know, try and ask you for business to do some embroidery for them. Little Miss Boutique says you missed the challenge. It's okay, darling. It's there and it's not going to go anywhere for a while, actually. Because, and the reason why I started this is because this is going into August. This is back to school. Back to school is one of the hugest times for embroidery. Why? Because these parents are on their head to promote their kids' stuff, label their kids' stuff, personalize their kids stuff the kids want their stuff to be different from everybody else's what a better way to do that than to embroider you can take a plain basic book bag and embroider a unicorn on it and these kids will flip out over it you know and it can be two three four five different unicorns and nobody would have the same one you know that's how how you know extreme the embroidery business can be for this month this time of the year so that's why i'm saying to you if you have something that you can promote out there that these parents are going to want especially get into it you know these uh the key fob not key fob the keychain holders with the hand sanitizer that we made the little pencil pouch crayola pencil pouch that i have a video step-by-step -step tutorial on those are going to be you know a hit come school time because these kids are going back to school so look at stuff like that it's free of charge why not do it dar smith says in the hoop keychain fobs yes we are still building going to take the machines to mom so we can work and improve mom's diet yeah so going there and using the machine there that'll also help you with some therapy you know some time to yourself in betwixt and in between taking care of mom you know give her her time but also you do have the downtime and it can help you take your mind off of a lot of stuff that's going on. Vanessa McCorkle, hi, darling, how are you? I have missed you. I have missed you guys as well. Busy life, but I am here now. Don't forget to hit the like button, everyone. Please, please, please don't forget to hit the like button. I would really appreciate it. And thank you for uh, reminding everyone of doing that because it is important. Let me know that I'm doing my job to help benefit you. Uh, Darson says, Eve, thank you for caring to help others. You're quite welcome. You're quite welcome. I appreciate when people help me. So I would definitely want to reciprocate that for other people. Maria says, I was able to buy the backpacks from Roses. Yes, I embroidered them, but my daughter-in-law took them and I forget to get pictures. I do have several more projects going on. So I'll get to get pictures and you can call her and say, hey, take a picture real quick how cute is a how you know cute and eye-catching and you know hey other parents are like that kid is wearing the book if you can get a picture of the kid wearing the book bag tell her hey have little timmy put the book bag on outside like he's standing for the school bus and take a picture of his backpack tell him to take a cool pose that's the type of stuff that you want to promote and put out there because people want to see real life kids using this stuff not just not always just stuff posed up, you know what I'm saying? So call her. You you That might not be a bad thing that you were able to get those to her without getting your pictures. She might take the bomb pictures for you, <laughs> okay? And get the ones that's going to bring in that business, if that's what you want. Debbie Kidd, you're on Facebook and Instagram. Sweet. Dar Smith, so is Twitter. To allow others to know when you post to any Google account, that is correct. Maria Cola. Colin, you said your Facebook, so Facebook only. Joni Thurman, you have a Facebook business page. Sweet. Pamela Hale, I am on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you. You guys, these are these are avenues that's free that you can use. Debbie Kidd, yours is under American Eagle Embroidery. And sure, if you want anyone in this chat to follow you back, put it out there. Let us know what your Instagram, Facebook, Twitter handle is, you know, the at. And then whatever your handle is so that we can follow you back, okay? Karen Martin says, thank you to Latasha. <laughs> Miss Purplewood, I have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Shayla McKinnon, Instagram and Facebook. I have Twitter, but haven't used it in years. Yeah, I'm 
I'm slack with Twitter. But the cool thing about Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, well, it starts with Instagram. You can post to Instagram and tell Instagram to automatically post to Twitter and Facebook for you. Okay? You can post to Instagram and tell Instagram to post to Facebook and Twitter for you. And actually, it's Reddit, it's Twitter, where all else? It's a ton of places that Instagram will automatically post for you, all right? I got a dirty phone. Oh, the screen looks terrible. Let me see if I can wipe it off and show you what I'm talking about for those that don't know. Because somebody asked me the other day, how do you do that? It's not difficult. So you go into your Instagram and you have your main page, right? So you go to your little picture down in the lower corner and you touch that to get to your settings. And when you get to your settings, where is it? Is it edit profile? Right. So you go to the three dots up here. And when you go to those three dots, that is not the three dots. That is not the three dots. There we go. You would want to go to, where's linked accounts? Scroll till you see linked accounts. Sorry, you can't see none of that. So when you go into the three dots, here's your menu. You got to scroll way down and go to linked accounts. And when you get to linked accounts, that's where you check mark and put on here where the other accounts are that you want to associate with your Instagram account. So they'll do Facebook, they'll do Twitter, they'll do Tumblr, Amoeba, and OK, are you? Those are chap stuff. I don't know anything about those three. Well, I do know about Tumblr, but I don't do Tumblr for business. So Facebook and Twitter. And then when you post a picture and what you would do is tell it to share and it'll automatically post for you as you post it to Instagram. How easy is that? How stinking easy is that? You can do it. All right. You can do it. So um, Debbie Kid, it would be great if we could all connect with each other. Yes, ma'am. So like I said, put your handle out there. If you want someone else to connect with you, that's cool. Um, and it's business. We want to promote each other and follow each other. Because if I follow you, that's one more follower that you have. You know, that only helps you. Because sometimes people are like, well, I don't know. Don't nobody know her. Well, she has followers, you know. So it, it does help. Um, Dark Smith says, Eve, we continue to pray that you will get better at your diet. Mm, love you. Love you too. <laughs> but uh I don't know about getting better, <laughs> especially when I keep having temptations with ice cream sandwiches, but we're going to leave that alone. Uh, Patches, Miss Pat says, I have Facebook and Instagram. Karen Martin, I am on Facebook, Instagram, have Twitter account, but not active. Um, yes, I, I know I'm supposed to set an example. We're going to leave that alone. <laughs> Vanessa McCorkle says, I am on Facebook as Vanessa McCorkle and Instagram as signs to Nessa. Okay, cool. You need to get one seriously. Yeah, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Twitter is good. Also, another another one that's not as easy to use, okay? And you can't, like, post. I don't, well, you know what? It's been a while since I've been on there. But a good business connection. Like, if you're really looking for commercial accounts, another one is, um, Y'all know the name of it. I can't think of it right now. It's the business Facebook. I can't think of what it is right now because I'm on there under my business name, but I just don't use it. LinkedIn. It's called LinkedIn. So you can do a business profile on LinkedIn and put on there that you do embroidery. And sometimes some more, a lot of business people stick to LinkedIn and they use LinkedIn like heavily. So if another commercial business is looking for embroidery, they may do a search for embroidery. You could be the one that they pull up local in your area. So a LinkedIn account is also something to look into. All righty. Um, Debbie Kidd says, I sent you an email when you get around to it. I have a question about the NBM show in November. Oh, yep. We have a, um, we have a show coming to Charlotte in November. All right. And I'm going to let you guys know about it because um, I do plan to be there. It's, I'm only going to be there one day, though, and I have to figure out what day that's going to be. I haven't really um, came to a concrete decision just yet because um, that week, so Friday is the first day of the NBM show, then Saturday and Sunday is the last day. The second, 
third and fourth or something to that effect. Let me look at my calendar, y'all, because I don't, I don't like to want to make sure I'm telling you right. So November the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th is the MBM show, okay? The MBM show is for businesses that do promotional things, all right? So they have um, direct-to-garment um, vendors there. They have embroidery vendors there. They have rhinestone. The rhinestone world it is was there last year. They'll be there again this year. Um, uh, laser uh, machine vendors were there last year with the laser machines that cut wood or etch inside the little clear square figurines that people buy. Um, who else was there? 3D printing machines were there. Um, so anything dealing with a business with promotional items like trophies and stuff like that, they were all there. Also, um, uh, God, Carolina Made, my place that I go to for a lot of my I, my things that I embroider on, t-shirts and shorts and pants and uh, hoodies and that type of stuff, they were there. You know, So if you're interested, it's not a strictly embroidery show. All right. But if you do vinyl, if you do rhinestones, if you do embroidery, it's still a really good show to go to and connect. And you can look at all the new little machines that they have and drool over the hoops and the thread. There was some thread vendors there. Um, so it's a good show to go to. Um, but it's in Charlotte. It's the 1st of November, the 2nd, the 3rd and the 4th. And usually this year, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th to the 8th, I'm usually on vacation in Boone, all right? So, of course, they would come the weekend that I usually go to go on vacation. So, I'm going to take one of those days and either come back from Boone, go ahead and go up there, or I may just go Friday um, and then Friday night leave and go on vacation and just stay up there. But because where we go to vacation isn't too terribly far from here, it really isn't that big of a deal to drive back to Charlotte. But, you know, who wants to go and then come right back? Yeah. So anyways, um, so if you're interested in the NBM show, that's N is in Nancy, B is in boy, M show. Uh, it is here in Charlotte, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. I will let you guys know what day I will be there. I would love to see you guys. Someone, anyone, not a problem. <laughs> if you want to come and say hi, I'll be here. So it's a good, what's that, four months heads up, you know, to save up if you wanted to travel to Charlotte. So I'd love to see you. Let me know if you are coming this way. All right. Terry Romano says, someday can you show me where to place the oil? If you have the brother um, embroidery machines, the single needles, uh, the small ones anyway, I don't have a 5x7. I do have a video on the 4x4 embroidery machines to show you exactly where you can oil your machine. I don't think I have a video showing where to oil the 6 needle. But yes, we can do a refresher and have a video just strictly on oiling um, when I can get around to it because I've gotten tons of video requests lately and just haven't been getting videos done. I, I have, like, I just recorded one video and haven't finished editing it. And it's been recorded for over a week. So yeah, I've been slack lately. I've been slack lately. I need to do better. Shayla McKinnon, my problem with social media is a lot of times I'm just trying things out and people think I'm selling. I find myself repeating a lot that I'm practicing. And that's where I mention, Ms. Shayla, that if you are trying to get business, then you can say, hey, these I'm selling. But if people are asking you, that's letting you know that whatever it is that you're doing and you practice, it looks good enough to where they're really interested in it. So if you are trying to build yourself up to actually running a business, you don't have to be full fledged, you know, open and close. These are my opening times. These are my closing times. It doesn't have to come to that. OK, so if you've done something, let's say, for instance, as a baby bib. And you posted it and somebody's like, oh, girl, that's cute. I want one of those. And you said, well, I'm just practicing. Okay, well, you obviously practiced it good enough to where these people want to buy one. Sell them one. <laughs> you know, get your first customer. Get your first couple of customers. And let them know, hey, I'm just practicing. 
you maybe not charge completely full price. I wouldn't suggest doing that though. That's a mistake that I made. Don't get into that habit. Don't get into the habit. I got into the habit. That was the worst mistake I have made in starting my business is not charging official embroidery prices because I was like, oh, I'm just practicing and I was charging cheaper. So as time went on, people expected me to stick to those cheap prices and I'm working my butt off with cheap prices. So um, definitely find out what a going rate is with the embroidery for whatever it is that you're making and stick to that price all right um meanwhile just find little simple things get good at making them and maybe just sell just that and then when you make something else and you are practicing just say hey this is something i was practicing on what do you guys think about it how does it look would you be interested in it and people love reacting you know giving their feedback to a question that you would pose with it some people are like man, man i don't like that or others will be like girl that's hot you may want to sell that that's a good idea you want to interact with your customers. You want them to feel that their opinion is valuable, right? That's, that's a huge thing. Your customers want to feel that their opinion is valuable. So ask a question, post it, it's okay. You don't have to be hardcore business. You could be just every so often business. It's nothing wrong with that, Shayla, it really isn't. So if they say they're interested in it, why not sell it to them? You know, make them one and, and you know, because obviously you're that good if you're repeating that a lot. Think about it. I mean, I'm just saying. Dar Smith, Eve is spot on cleaning and oiling is very important. Yes, it is. Yes, yes, it is. Um, because that's a quick way to tear up your baby is to not clean and oil, <laughs> especially frequently. If you use them frequently, that's a way to tear it up. Teresa Spencer says, I did post to the group. Sweet. I will check that as soon as the live is over little miss boutique says miss eve what is your advice in getting a web page i've been thinking about it but not sure yet okay so with the web page i do have one uh, but when i set it up i initially set it up as uh, commerce so to sell bibs and to sell my bird cloths and the baby blankets and whatnot i personally did not have much success with it people seem to how can I put this? They they want to see not, and eh, that's not a good way to put that. Um, social media will pull in more business for you than a website will. I'll put it that way. You know, because everybody, it's almost like this. You can have a brick and mortar store down the street from your house. Okay. And it's back off in a little cut somewhere, but you do have a brick and mortar store. Well, if you don't have a whole ton of traffic driving back and forth past that brick and mortar, I mean, nobody's going to know you're there, all right? Whereas if your store, your embroidery shop was at a mall, a really busy big mall, all right, well, you're going to get business. You're going to get a lot of business because that's where everybody goes. They go to the mall to shop, right? Well, everybody is on some form of social media, all right? They may not know anything about your place. But they'll see you on social media and they're like, hey, this person has a business. Then they'll say, do you have a website where we can go and see? So it is good to have a website, but don't sink a whole ton of money into a website, especially initially when you're just getting started. So find a little free website like uh, free web hosting. Uh, Wix is a good one. They do have free um it's a lot of them out there just type in free web hosting or a free website and put up just a little simple one for right now where people can see your information or where they need to go or how they need to order or how they need to contact you but don't do this whole blown storefront type situation just yet just yet not just yet so start it out that way now if you can find a lesser expensive type storefront like and I'm, I'm saying Etsy and I don't want to say Etsy because Etsy and I are on the outs right now. But there's also Shopify, I believe is the name of it. Um, so a little something like that. If you really are interested in doing e-commerce and you don't mind doing like the same thing over and over, you got 50 key fob rings and you're going to sell those this year so you can post that people can buy them and sell them or if they want to custom because see that's where my problem was people want custom 
you know, so they have to put in that they want custom changes to it. So the website really wasn't effective for me. It really was not. It, it wasn't. But your setup may be effective for a website. But one thing's for certain, your social media is where everybody's at. Social media is hot right now. And that's why I've been preaching, you know, put something out there if that's the route you're wanting to take. If you want to build up business, put the information out there on social media. Okay. So if you can get a, you know, little affordable little website for right now, sure, definitely do it. But I think, see, you already do business, Little Miss Boutique. You already do your tutus. And if I'm remembering correctly, you do your tutus and stuff and, you know, your business does really well so far. So you might be at the point where a website is beneficial for you. And if that's the case, sure, you know, invest in it. If your business is coming in regularly, I don't have anything against it because I have one. And it does help in some instances. Marianne Reddick, hello all. Hello to you too. Mama Mary. Hi, Mama Mary. Hi, I made it. I have Facebook set up, but I have been so busy dealing with my son's brain surgery. As soon as that is done, I'm going to promote like crazy. And that's the other thing. Now, I'm glad to hear that he's getting things corrected. I'm hoping so. And I'm sorry to hear that he's even having to go through that. But as soon as it is done, we'll definitely pray for you as well, because that's that's major surgery. But when you do go to promote, don't forget, he has recovery. All right. And you need to make sure that you pace yourself, because I ran into that problem as well, where I was just inundated with business and didn't have time for anybody or anything else, which is partly why I have it. And putting videos out there but since i've cut back i'll be putting my videos back out so you know make sure that you check and cross check and do your research on how much you want to be out there and let them know there may be times my son was ill at some point so there may be a time where i have to take a break you may want your blanket embroidered and i can't get to it right now because he's having to go back to a doctor's appointment so it may be a little bit keep in communication with your customers keep in communication with them when you have things like that going on shayla mckinnon i do sell but my time management is a serious problem girlfriend i'm right there with you um so right now i'm doing sewing embroidery crocheting knitting and also still learning vinyl on different things and that is something else too that a lot of us crafters have a huge problem with. We are so multifaceted that we can do so much on so many different levels that at some point it's like, oh my gosh, where I, I can't I can't do it all. This is just too much, you know, because this person wants me to crochet a sweater and this person wants some t-shirts pressed and this person wants you know me to knit a blanket i just it's too much so be careful with that too you know find what really gets to your soul find what really speaks to you and stick with that you know pick a couple of things because i promise you you'll get overwhelmed like i did oh my god let's not get into that right now <laughs> so that's what i'm saying mama mary i have been told to grab my business name on all social medias now though that is absolutely correct that is absolutely correct if you have a name and that's the name you feel like your business is going to be. And it's okay if you decide to change later. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you do have a business name, it is best to go ahead and get the email address, gmail.com, the outlook.com, the Facebook page, the Instagram handle. Because Instagram, you can change. It don't have to stay the same with Instagram. The Twitter handle, you do want to go ahead and lock those down, especially if it's a name that's really important to you. If it's important and it speak like my business name was very important to me. His business name I've had ever since my daughter was one and a half. She wasn't even two. And I came up with this business name. So I've been sitting on it for a long time. So when the time came for me to put it out there, it was important. I was going to have to have it no matter what. So I got the dot com. I got the facebook i got everything and then i was uh consulting with a business partner and she was like why don't you change your name mm -mm. nope not gonna do it <laughs> i'm not gonna do it because my name meant that much to me so just like for you and your business 
if you have a business name that's important to you, then yes, you do need to go ahead and get that. Maria says, oh, you are so right. I have her posted. I know she'll do it. Yeah, girl. We like taking pictures of our babies, especially for them to be cute. Mm -hmm. And that baby will help you make money, too. It's a free model, girl. Ain't grandbabies something special? <laughs> Shayla McKinnon says, my mind runs a mile a minute. Oh, yes, I bake and make candy. Girl, friend. Oh, you, you're making me tired. And I'm sitting over <laughs> I can't talk, though. I really cannot. I really shouldn't even be saying anything. And I'm not even going to tell y'all all the different things I've dabbled in through my life, through my 20 years of being married with my husband. And, like, I think it's four years ago now, he was like, look, if you can just stick to one thing, <laughs> he said, I'll support you wholeheartedly. He said, it's just one thing. That's all I'm asking you. And guess what I did? I stuck to the one thing and it was embroidery. And he was behind me the whole way. So, but it's been a lot that we've been, that I've been trying to get into. So, yeah, we'll leave that alone too. Um, let us see. Where was I? Oh, Maria says, right now I'm making a JoJo Siwa style bow for the grands. Cool. I don't know what a JoJo Siwa style bow is. So, Miss Maria, if you will post that in the Google Plus group, you have peaked my curiosity i really want to see that sammy strange says strong says i'm afraid of hashtags <laughs> hashtags are okay hashtags are important all right hashtags are very important for instagram now i'm gonna share with you guys and if you already know it my bad but a lot of people don't know if you especially if you're not social media savvy when it comes to your hashtags, all right, you really want to do hashtags. Okay. How can I put this up? All right. You post a picture of a baby blanket that you did, and it's adorable. Just because you post a picture of it on Instagram, only your followers, for the most part, are going to see it. How do you get your picture of your baby blanket out there to the whole world? Now, this is Instagram, not 100% sure that it works the same way on Facebook, but I know it works on Instagram. How do you get more followers? How do you get people that are interested in embroidery? They want to see baby blankets so that they can be like, that's cute. I want that for my kid. Well, the way you do it is you post your picture, you put your description up under it. I was told this and I saw it work for myself. Don't put hashtags in your description just go ahead and post it just like that but the first comment on your picture that's where you put your hashtags and when you put your hashtag you want to put a hashtag that is associated with what your item is so hashtag embroidery hashtag baby blanket hashtag baby girl hashtag baby shower gift hashtag new baby okay now the ultimate secret with those hashtags and it really isn't a secret but a lot of people don't know on instagram when you type out a hashtag it will start to as you type it it will bring up a suggested list of hashtags that you might want to use so say for instance the baby blanket you do hashtag baby well it'll pull up a list of things that are associated with or or hashtags that start with baby is what i mean to say if you look at that list it will tell you how many hashtags are currently out there for that topic all right so if you do i'll show you show you exactly how this works i, I hope i can anyway because i think i have something that's waiting to be posted let's see nope i don't good all right so if I go to here and I do hashtag baby on my Instagram, it pulls up, I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, it pulls up a list of the different hashtags. And this says recent because these are ones that I've done before. So I'm not going to do baby. Let's do, uh, I'm going to do something I haven't done. So hashtag food because I don't do anything about food. All right. Now, if you look at that list, How many hashtags are there out there? Public posts on food. Food is the second one down. 286 million, almost 287 million public posts 
on hashtag food. So can you imagine how many posts per day that people are saying hashtag food? So if someone goes out there on Instagram and they do a search for hashtag food because that's what they're interested in, how far down the list do you think your post is going to be? You are going to be competing against 286 million posts about hashtag food. All right. So let's let me show you something else. So we're, I'm going to scroll down some and see if I can find one under food. Okay, so food time. Food time is one. It's not a really good one, but it's better than what I was going to say. So food, hashtag food time. Look at how many posts that is. 938,000. Okay, so I was told that the secret number to get your post seen by the most people on a particular topic is to do a hashtag on a topic and no more than roughly about 400 to 500,000 posts on that topic. Okay, so instead of picking just food, it's more likely that your post will show up if you do hashtag food time instead of just hashtag food. Okay, so all of the people that are interested in food time, they're going to look at your stuff. So if I'm remembering correctly, baby is up in the hundreds of millions uh, on hashtags. But baby shower gift is in the hundreds of thousands. So it's only just a few. So it's easier for people who are looking for baby shower gifts to find your posting on Instagram. All right. Now, I know that was heavy. <laughs> I know that was heavy. And and if you're not a social media type person, that might have, you know, was like, you know, went over your head and you was like, OK, I need you to slow down. But that is a huge tip for social media, for Instagram. You need to push those hashtags if you want your post to be seen by more people. Now, if you don't care, don't even hashtag. Because there are some posts I have out there, I'm like, forget it. I ain't got time. Because it's work. Instagram is work, but it's free. It is free work, free advertising. And if you're dead serious about getting your information out there, you will take that time to get those hashtags, research those hashtags. There are there are apps out there and websites out there that help you find the right hashtag that will get your stuff out there in front of people. But it's easy because it pulls up for you right there on Instagram, you know. Now, I don't know if it works the same on Facebook, but if you do a hashtag and you're thinking instead of baby blanket, you want to say baby girl gift, look at how many posts are out there now if it's only ten thousand posts well that's not a really popular post that people are looking for so don't do baby girl gift you know you want something that's up in the hundreds of thousands not over 500 but you know right there in that ballpark and that's popular enough where people are actually looking for that and they'll see your stuff all right and then all of a sudden you're going to be getting friend requests friend requests friend requests and we want to be friends because they're interested in what it was that you posted on there and that might be the break that you need that will get you the business that you want that was a lot i apologize <laughs> but it's been helpful it helped me it really did now i'm not because i don't post constantly like that and because i really don't want to suck in the tons and tons of business like that from somebody saying Ohio and they want the order, you know, I no, not right now because of the direction that I'm changing my business to. Um, so I'm not looking for that. But if I was and that's something like early on, I wanted to do that. I was really pushing those hashtags. OK, so just wanted to let you know that I consulted with a business coach and I saw it work. I saw it work. Um, let us see. Where was I at? You said Hefreda hashtag. So let's skip to Miss Leah Jones. Don't interest in Instagram. Not a problem, dear. Not a problem at all. You have to go with what's comfortable for you. All right. Which is, again, I can't emphasize that enough. Some people are like, why are you just on Google Plus? Why don't you have a group page on Facebook? Because a lot of people don't like Facebook. Sorry. And a lot of folks older folks don't like facebook and i want to cater to the people who are interested in the information that i have to provide for them and those are the people who matter to me and if they're not all on facebook i want to go somewhere where they feel safe 
and Google Plus is not one of those, oh my God, it's just like social media overwhelming and crazy. So that's why it's on Google Plus and that's also why it's private. <laughs> So it's okay if you're not on Instagram. It's okay if you're not on Twitter. And it's okay if you're not on Facebook. If it's not your thing, that's fine. That's not an issue. You do what works for you, all right? Definitely do what works for you. Shayla McKinnon says, social media was giving me anxiety. So my mind is just on creating what I feel people want. When I'm done, I will post again, again. Yes, I understand. I totally get it. And there are times where I completely disconnect from social media because it can be overwhelming because I am on Twitter because I am on Snapchat I am on Instagram I am on Facebook and working with the Google Plus group some days it's like okay if I see one more post about anything I'm gonna scream and it's only because we can get so engrossed in this digital age it can be overwhelming so you don't want to overwhelm yourself so there are some days where I just only do Google Plus that's it and there are some days I I just will scroll like this on Facebook for all of 10 minutes. I'm like, okay, I'm done. I can't deal with this no more. You know, so don't be offended. <laughs> now, I'm going to put this out there too. So I'm covering my butt. Please don't be offended if you're posting something on Google Plus or you're trying to connect with me on Facebook, Instant Messenger, or you're sending me a private message on Instagram and I don't respond within a day or two because there are times where I actually have to back away and take a breather that's life that's how life works and because i'm human i have to disconnect at times so it's okay i will get to you but it's just and eh, sometimes i don't respond right away email is actually the fastest way to contact me because i'm pretty much i stay on top of my email for the most part um sometimes i overlook things but for the most part i'm, I'm better with email than i am with the social media so um, that is a definite thing to keep in mind. Miss Pat says patches embroidery and designs at Facebook and patches 1959 at Instagram. So I will definitely do that. Miss Becca, hey love. She says I hope to see some of you there in the Charlotte in Charlotte at the NBM show. We did discuss that, so hopefully we'll have you there. Terry Romano says the SE 600. Okay, so it's the five by seven. Um, now, are you, oh, you said four by four. Okay, so is that, you were asking about oiling that machine. Am I understanding correctly or did you get a new baby? Which one? Because we got a bell sitting right here. For anyone that got a new baby and I haven't rung the bell for you, let me know what you have so we can ring the bell for your baby. Okay, and if you got the name, let us know that too. We like when we name our babies. <laughs> but if it's the SE 600 4 by machine that you were talking about oiling, I do have a machine maintenance video. So if you do a search for um, brother machine maintenance, that video should come up and it will show you the places where you can oil your machine, how to take it apart and how to put it back together. All righty. Dolores Domino, Domino, I am new to the group. Well, welcome Dolores. We appreciate you being here. Thank you for joining us live. Shayla McKinnon says, oh yes, and sublimation. Now, nah, Shayla. Now, Shayla, <laughs> sublimation too, which I'm doing right now while watching you and making baby socks to go with baby sets I'm working on. I will post in the Google Plus group. Girl, I'm going to need you to tone it. <laughs> but if you have the high energy to do it, do you, girl? Get your coins. Wherever you can get them, go ahead and do it. I ain't even mad at you. But wow, that's a lot. That's a lot to be involved in, especially if you're making money off of all of those avenues. Don't burn yourself out, chick. Don't do it. Teresa Spencer, why is there never a show in Las Vegas? Boy, do I miss Chicago. Are you kidding? They don't do shows in Las Vegas? Well, you know what? I don't know that there's a huge demand for crafting in Las Vegas, so that could be why. That could be why. So, not sure about that. But Terry Romano says, where do you buy your hat blanks? I buy my hat blanks from a couple of places. One of the places is um, Carolina Made, which is local to me. And I can pick them up. The other place that I get my hats from is buckwholesale.com. B-U-C-K. W-H-O-L-E-S-A-L-E. Buckwholesale.com. Tons of hats on there. Dirt cheap. I mean, very affordable. The only downside is sometimes they run out of popular hats. So you got to keep that in mind. But usually those are my two go-tos. All right. 
Uh, Debbie Kidd says it's actually the first, second, and third, but the show is only the second and third. They aren't doing Sunday. The first is just for training. Okay. They're not doing Sunday this year? Oh, my God. That's horrible because they did um, Sunday last year because I went on Sunday. It was empty, though, so I can understand why they wouldn't do Sunday. But I went on Sunday last year, hmm. and, it, and it closed early, so I guess that makes sense. Well, I stand corrected, y'all. It's only the second and the third, so I guess the second is when I will go. And, yeah, I knew not the first because that's Thursday, and nobody really goes to shows on a Thursday. Um, but the second, it may be Friday. Miss Bickham, it may be Friday. I'll call you. Um, Miss LTR Columbia, hey you. How was you doing? Welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. <laughs> Debbie Kid, I have a website, but I think Facebook or other social media is the way to go nowadays. Yeah, that's where everybody is. That's where everybody is. I mean, if I had an op if I had a choice and could go anywhere I wanted to go and and be able to if I could afford it, whether I would do a standalone out on, you know, in a popular area of town, my own building, or at the mall for embroidery mall hands down because people are going there to spend money they're going there to buy clothing and items and people want personalized things so i would shoot more for the mall than i would out in a standalone building now unless i needed huge space you know but you can get big space in the mall too so you want to go where the people are and the people are on social media i mean they really are as you know the the younger folks with money to spend they're on social media they really are. Um, let us see. LTR Columbia, I am a website developer. And honestly, for small businesses, using Etsy, Facebook, or anything like that is the best way. You guys heard it straight from a web developer. And I did not know that's what you were. I may need to call you. I may need to call you. Check email me, please. Because I got somebody that's trying to get a website done. Debbie Kid, Weebly is free. They do have a free option. I have a paid option with Weebly, but they also have free. LTR Columbia, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest are the top socials right now. Pinterest, oh my God, Pinterest is fire. I stay on Pinterest, y'all. I don't post on Pinterest. I have a business Pinterest account, so I'm on Pinterest too. Forgot about that. I am on Pinterest, but I don't. I'm not on there regularly, and I should be, but I'm not. Um, but Pinterest, everybody is there looking for pictures and looking for things, uh, ideas and things to purchase. So, yeah, Pinterest is hot. You, Miss Shayla, is Shayla's Creations with a K on Instagram. I show most of my work on there. And it's easy to post your pictures. People can scroll through your pictures and say, oh, man, that's hot. You know, it, it is. Social media is so easy. It's easy to do. LOTR Columbia is Store Envy is another Etsy like shop that is better. After Etsy's changes, I have started to look more into that. So, Store Envy, Store Envy, she says. So, definitely check into that. Little Miss Boutique says, Thank you, Eve. I'll be doing more research on it. You're welcome, my love. Janet McKinney, hello, Janet. How are you? Welcome. I appreciate you coming in here this evening. Marianne Reddick says, I just received business cards. I'm on Etsy and I am donating animal towel holders to an animal rescue fundraiser in the fall. So if they like them, they can call me to order more. And that's something that you definitely, Marianne, you definitely want to post that on social media. You definitely want to post that. Pictures of it that you're donating to it as a fundraiser, you want to post that on social media. Pets and kids. You about to stay busier than you ever know what to do with pets and kids. I'm trying to tell you, pets, ooh, pets is a hot spot for embroidery. It really is. There's not too much out there that people are offering, they, they want personalized dog collars with the dog's name on it. They want the harnesses with stuff embroidered. On. Man, pets. You need to post that on social media. If you want the business, you need to post that on social media. I'm trying to tell you, girl. LTR Crump, Hootsuite. Yeah, I've heard of Hootsuite. I haven't. I, I started to look into it, but something distracted me and I didn't get to. And then I ended up on Etsy. And I kind of regret, but I'm, I'm happy in a way, but I regret it. Um, but I will look into Hootsuite as well. 
they have a free version, but their premium version is better. Oh, wait a minute. Hootsuite, is that uh, web hosting or is that like Etsy type store? Let me know because I've seen it, but I can't remember what it is because it's been a while. Teresa Spencer, all good information. Thank you. I appreciate that, ma'am. I would set up a page for your business, then use your personal page to advertise it. That is, that's how I do Are you talking about like on Facebook or Instagram? I don't do that on Instagram, but that's how I do it on Facebook. I use, um, I have a separate business page and then a personal page. And for those that don't want a personal page on Facebook, you can do a business page. You can do like a really super private personal page that you don't do anything on it, but then just strictly go through your business and your business name and do all your posting and stuff with your business name. And you don't have to have all that crazy interaction with folks on the other level. You know, because the business page for people that like your business page, they don't, they're not connected to your personal page, right? So all of the folks that I have on my baby's booty Facebook page, I don't see any of their personal posts and things like that because it's a business connection. So I don't see, you know, oh my God, I fell out with this person and this, that, that, and the third and all that. I don't see none of that drama. Thank the Lord. So your business page can be your haven, you know, and you can just completely ignore your personal page if you want to do it that way. So that's an excellent um, suggestion, ma'am. Sammy Strunge, thank you, Eve. That is very helpful. You're welcome. You're welcome. Miss Eunice says, it, is it LinkedIn, the business site you were talking about? That is correct. The business social media, LinkedIn. It is hot for commercial connections, all right? commercial connections, business. I was told that secretaries, now corporate, top corporate men folks and women folks that run their businesses, usually they don't have time to go out and look for an embroiderer for the birthday present for their cousin's new baby. They tell the secretary to go out and find somebody to embroider the present for their cousin's new baby secretaries are all throughout and then assist personal assistants and secretaries they rely heavily on linkedin so if you're looking for that corporate type business linkedin is the route to go and make sure your business page is tight on linkedin your information your contact information make sure all of that is updated okay i'm glad i said that there is no reason to have a Facebook or an Instagram or any social media or any website or LinkedIn, any of that. There's no reason if your contact information is not updated. So if your email address is bad, find another email address and link your stuff through that. If you want people to contact you by phone and you say, hey, you can contact me by phone. And they call that phone number and they get doo doo doo. We're sorry. The number you have reached has been disconnected. That's going to suck. And they're going to be like, uh -huh. click. And they will not contact you back for anything else. I had a business person tell me implicitly a huge, a matter of fact, it was the news station, my local, one of the largest local news stations. She said, that when they were looking for an embroidery business to do their jackets, she went on Instagram, not Instagram, Facebook, and she found three different businesses that did embroidery local to Charlotte, North Carolina. When they tried to contact all three, mine was the only one where the information was correct. They could contact me and my information was updated regularly. They saw updates, pictures. They saw examples of my work. They saw that. She said, that's what made them call me. And that's how I got that business. Okay. So it's a responsibility now. So if you're going to get into it, you got to keep up with it. And you got to make sure that your stuff is right. And make sure your stuff is tight, especially on LinkedIn. Oh my gosh. LinkedIn is, they expect you to be on the level of perfection when you're dealing with folks on LinkedIn. So Definitely, definitely, definitely do that. Bickham says you can start a free site and as your business grows, you can change it over or add the second. That is absolutely correct, with, especially with Weebly and some of the other free places. Janet McKinney, it's okay. We understand you need your time as well. I know, but I also have 
verbally committed to my channel and it's something that I am very happy to have and I'm blessed to be connected to so many people and the disappoint folks makes me sad so <laughs> I try to make sure that when I say I'm going to do something I'm able to do it but I also have a husband who loves me so very much and is spoiled and he wants all of his time and then some so sometimes a lot of times I'm having to go do with him <laughs> and he gonna kill me when he see that but it's all right um let us see you said nope okay so it wasn't the um it wasn't about oil in the machine i forgot what question i asked you yeah we've been doing a, i've been doing a lot of talking miss pat says you got the brother entrepreneur 655 six needle machine Woo! time to ring the bell y'all y'all ready to ring the bell Woo! congratulations on your baby miss pat Six Needle! <laughs> Congratulations, man. The Six Needle is fun. I'm trying to tell y'all, oh, I love that baby back there. Blessing is amazing. She can tackle all kinds of stuff, so you're going to be spoiled. Congratulations, and let us know what you named your baby. Kim Solomon says, hi, all very new to embroidery. Well, welcome. It is addictive. It will cause you to go broke if you're not careful on designs and supplies and all that cool stuff. So welcome to the obsession, which is embroidery. All righty. Ms. Bickham says, there's a great bunch of people here. Yes. Yes, it is. Carol Coleman, you can't hear me now? Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you're able to hear me now. Uh, oh, you might have started at the beginning. That's probably what's wrong. Ronnie's Wraps. I'm interested in buying a 5x7 machine, but am having a problem finding a vendor nearby. Do most people order them online? Okay, now the 5x7 machine, you you most people get theirs from um, Walmart or online, like Amazon or something like that. Um, finding a 5x7 machine locally Walmart is about the only place I can think of right off the top of my head to get it, unfortunately. And it's Brother. Joanne's Fabrics does do Viking, but I don't think Viking has, I don't, you know what, let me not say that. Viking has a whole range of machines, but I know they don't have a multi-needle. So you can check there to see if they have a 5x7 if you're not interested in the Brother machine or if you want to just go touch and see and feel and order it that way. Um... Teresa, you have a new baby singer, Futura, XL400. Congratulations, ma'am, on your new singer, Futura. Congratulations to your baby. And again, let us know what your baby's name is. Um, you name Debbie says I named my baby Michelangelo. Mikey for short. <laughs> That's cute, Michelangelo. Especially when Michelangelo is creating, just like the original Michelangelo. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, LTR Columbia is social media posting. Yeah, it's important if that's the route you want to take. All right. Ethel Smith, thank you for the information. You've been great. Love it. Pepper Ann. Well, hey, Miss Pepper Ann. Welcome. I must, must I use embroidery thread or can I use thread that is rayon or polyester? Well, guess what? There is embroidery thread that's rayon and there's embroidery thread that's polyester. <clears throat> so you possibly can use it. The thing is, what you want to look for is, is it fraying? Does it fray? All right. So uh, let me grab this real quick. Okay, and show you what I'm talking about. Here's a spool of regular sewing thread, all purpose sewing thread. Coates and Clark got it from Walmart, your basic run of the mill sewing thread. All right, let me see if it tells us what it 100% polyester. Okay, so again, like I told you, there is polyester threads that you can get um, that are embroidery threads. And now this thing won't look. There we go. I don't know that you'll be able to see this very well. And actually, you see it better if I show you the whole spool, hopefully. I don't know. Can you see that? There is a bunch of fuzzies. Look right here on this side. See how it's a bunch of fuzzies there? So the bad thing about sewing machine thread is it sheds. Okay? And that's not good for the embroidery machine. So think of the difference between, and I'm going over time, and I apologize, but think of the difference between the sewing machine and an embroidery machine. 
your sewing machine, you run it, you're sewing something, you know, running a few stitches and you're good. You're controlling the speed. You're pushing the foot pedal. Most instances, you're not going super fast, but you're going fast enough. An embroidery machine, however, if you look at this, you don't see any of those fuzzies. You don't see any of those fuzzies. Let me see if I can get it to focus on this embroidery thread. It ain't wanting to focus for nothing, is it? Dang it, camera. You're usually better. There we go. You don't see those fuzzies, do you? None whatsoever. That's what you want to look for to run through your embroidery machine. Why? Because the embroidery machine where your sewing machine might run at 200 stitches a minute, that embroidery machine can go six, the 4x4, four four, 600 stitches a minute. The larger one can go up to 900 to 1,000 stitches per minute, and some go even faster than that. So imagine that thread is constantly shedding all of those fibers down into your machine in addition to the fabric that you're embroidering, and that can gum up and dust up and get super dusty and just bog down your machine faster than if you didn't use that type of uh, thread for embroidery. All right, so that being the case, you want to be careful and use the thread that is specially made for embroidery because it will save the wear and tear and putting that dust and stuff all in your embroidery machine versus using this, which is made for a low speed sewing machine, basic sewing machine. All right, and you can use, I can thread this through my embroidery machine and I can use it but it's going to wear my machine down a whole heck of a lot faster, gunk it up a heck of a lot faster, um, and it's just not really made for that, all right? So check out your poly neons, your polyester, your rayon. There is rayon embroidery thread, but the thread is made in such a way to avoid all this fuzzy that's on regular thread, okay? Um, Thank you for the email. Janet McKinney says, that's good to know about the business page on Facebook. I will keep that in mind. Miss Pat says, thank you. You're welcome. A Shag, I'm a newbie and just purchased for the first time your baby brother, PE770, all the way from Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> We're going to ring the bell for Trinidad and Tobago, baby. Woo! Thank you for joining us all the way there and sharing with us that you got you a new baby. Congratulations, my dear. Thank you for letting us know that 770 is a lot of fun. So you have a good time with your 5x7 machine. It's an excellent machine and it will serve you well. So definitely we look forward to seeing everything that you have to produce off of your baby. So if you have any questions, just shoot me an email and let me know. Jenna McKinnon says, try Ken Sewing and Vacuum Center for the PE770. I think that's where we got our machine. Um, Maria Cullen says, the best thread for the embroidery thread is the 40 weight embroidery machine thread and 60 weight bobbin embroidery threads. There are tutorials on Sulky. Definitely, definitely stick with embroidery threads. You don't have to but if you want to keep your machine running smoothly for a good long time, no thread breaks and no issues, embroidery thread is the way to go. All-purpose thread, Miss LTR Columbia says, also breaks more often than embroidery thread. I have a lot of problem with all-purpose before I learned that lesson. Yes, ma'am. The PE770 is an amazing machine. I love mine, Michi says, and Yvette Long. Hi, Yvette. First time on the chat, new machine, brother NQ 1600E. Well, first time here and first time getting the bell ring, girl. Woo! <laughs> Congratulations on your baby. Your, uh, what did you tell me just now? I lost it. Oh, NQ 1600E. Chat just kind of went up real quick without me thinking about it. Congratulations and welcome to the group. We appreciate you being here live. Now, I'm getting ready to wrap it up because I'm 13. 18 minutes over and didn't realize it. Um, you said you're getting your new 770 very soon, saving up for it. Awesome. Let us know. Let us know. The cotton thread doesn't look as nice for the embroidery either, Miss Bickham says. And that is correct. Kimberly Green, what is the best brand of metallic thread? That's a loaded question. Reason why I say that is not every metallic thread is made the same. The Walmart metallic thread is a pain in the butt. I'm going to let you know that now. Sometimes it works good with the 4x4 machines. Sometimes it don't. It, my 
big machine hates it so i don't even torture my machine with that madeira has an excellent uh metallic thread sulky eh, not so much um but i haven't checked any of their latest stuff uh uh ganold is sulky brand as well but i haven't really tried there so the thing is give it a shot and it depends on what machine you have if you have like the 4x4 or the 770 you'll be able to get away with a lot more of the cheaper threads you just gotta keep an eye on it and try not to get designs that are like really intense and if you have a bigger machine sometimes if you slow the machine down like i can do that with the large machine but you can't slow down these 4x4 machines then if you slow it down then you'll be able to stitch better with those metallic threads all right miss karen caldwell says you gotta run but we'll be having your surgery on the 13th gonna try and stay busy until then bye for now bye darling and i will pray for your excellent success in your surgery and recovery ronnie's wraps has anyone purchased the dz820 which i've been told replaces the pe770 let her know and also if you're in the google plus group let us know if you've tried it and i need to get up with brother and see if we can't um get a hold to some of these newer machines and give them a run Mitch says slowing down your machine speed helps a bit with metallic thread issues yes it does and unfortunately the four by fours you can't slow down and debbie kid says your machine don't like silk threads sometimes my machine don't either you guys it's been wonderful i'm not gonna lie to you i was this close to not doing live tonight on accident because i was gonna run to walmart so now i'm gonna run away <laughs> i'm gonna run to walmart because i need to get some fleece fabric to make a blanket um but i enjoyed talking with you guys this evening as i always do uh, i look forward to seeing you guys every week on sunday evenings now 8 p.m our new time so I appreciate you taking your time out of your busy schedule to be here this evening. If you don't mind, please give us a thumbs up down below if you enjoyed our video, even with my current microphone not doing like it's supposed to. I appreciate y'all's patience with that in the very beginning. Also, if you don't subscribe, please subscribe. I know I haven't been putting very many videos out lately. We are working to correct that. And I look forward to getting more training videos out there, more step-by-steps on some uh, embroidery projects that I have in the works. And also, we're trying to get more informative videos in the works. We're talking about adding some vinyl in there, you guys. I've been working with Justin. Me and Justin have been talking about it. So we're going to see if we can't get some vinyl tutorials in there as well. So if you're interested in that, we got a professional and Mr. Justin going to do some vinyl with him, all right? So I look forward to seeing you guys, Lord willing, next Sunday and nothing crazy goes comes about. And if you're able to squeeze in the MBM show, I look forward to seeing you there as well. We'll concrete which day, Friday or Saturday, that I'll be there. So until the next time, you know what we want you to always have. We want you to have happy embroidering. I appreciate you being here and you guys have a great rest of your evening. Bye. <laughs>